on the ice today ahead of game one, and Adam Henrique was skating. <clears throat> Henrique may have been a placeholder. Ibrar with the lines here. Top line stays the same, damn right. Second line doesn't stay the same. Evander Kane not on the ice. Maintenance day is the expectation for him. Drysaddle, Holloway, Kane will probably be the second line. I'm reading this as kind of Henrique's not ready to go. Now, Chris Knobloch did say Henrique will be available early in the series, mm -hmm. but it's game three or sooner. So I'm assuming not tomorrow. Yeah, which is expected, I guess, is a good way to put it. I mean, he's coming back from a difficult injury to recover from. It's just such a short period of time. But it's promising that he's been skating the last little bit. He's obviously close enough that they can put a timeline on it. So back on, what would that be? Monday, Tuesday would be game three? Something like that. Uh, Thursday, Saturday, Monday would be game three. So good to see him back in the lineup, adding that little extra depth. And I know the center talk in this series has been something with the depth that uh, the Dallas Stars have. I think the others have that too, especially if Henry can come back. Beginning of a new series, is there any part of you that is surprised that uh, Corey Perry isn't drawing back in? No, I think the team played so well the last two games without him. Like, he doesn't deserve to be back in, quite frankly, at the moment. And I mean, look how long it took Carrick to get back into the lineup, right? Like, mm -hmm. I just don't see why Perry would... Deserves the wrong word, because I think in the overall scheme of the season, Perry has been has been good, but these last few games, he struggled with the foot speed of it all, but we'll see how this series goes against Ellis. I could see it being a bit more chippy than what uh, than what the, the Vancouver one was, for the sole reason of Jamie Benn being an arsehole. That is fair. Uh, we have someone in our Facebook, Liam, I don't know if you can see this, full-on meltdown that Evander Kane isn't playing. Uh, Vander Kane's going to play. Don't worry. He will be in the lineup for game one of this series. It's a maintenance day. Adam Henrique is his placeholder. Henrique likely isn't ready. Kane will be ready for game one. Um, a lot of you people chiming in on Corey Perry. Um, Sean Perry just got a bonus for making it to the Western Conference final. He did. Rob says Perry sucks, doesn't deserve to go back in. I think that's a little bit much. Um, Sasky oil fan. I liked Perry out. He can be a bachelor motivated in a positive way. Mm. Okay. Interesting choice of words there. Uh, Mulek said former, former team bump though. We'll see Corey Perry in this series. Like there's no doubt yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, we will see him at some point. It's obviously obvious that Knobloch isn't afraid to kind of rotate his lineup when he'd be in. Look, I, I don't expect Sam Carrick or Derek Ryan or Connor Brown to play every game in this series. They're just not those guys, especially Derek Ryan. Like We've kind of seen it where he'll have these stretches of being really, really good, but he's also older now, and he can't play every single night. And maybe that's when you get Perry in, and maybe that's what Perry's been dealing with too, of be, having those older legs. He turned 39 that last series. What are Facebook you chat, by the way. I usually no. don't even have it open. Facebook chat is unhinged today, by the way. It is one person. It is one person is incredibly unhinged. Anyways, uh, we're going to stay right dialed in. Obviously, Stuart Skinner is going to be the guy in game one for the Edmonton Oilers. And I'm really intrigued to see what we get out of Stuart Skinner, even early on in this series. Because, again, he was good. or He was passable in game six and seven. And against Vancouver and even against L.A., all you needed was passable, right? Now, mm -hmm. I think you need Stuart Skinner to step it up a little bit. Again, the pressure on Skinner for game six and seven was just to not suck. It was like, hey, man, go in there and give us, what did we say? 880 or better, 870 or better. And he was 880 or better in both the games. They won both the games. That's great. I don't think they're going to be able to get through Dallas with 880. They need nine nine ten or better to beat the dallas stars because they're going to come in they're going to attack way more than the vancouver canucks did vancouver barely got any quality scoring chances in that hockey game or in those last two hockey games you could say that's not going to be the case with dallas yeah they'll definitely need more from skinner i think it's an interesting debate because i've had this one with myself on the show before like i think save percentage is a very interesting number because you look at that game seven and Skinner did enough to, to win them that game, right? Like, yep. and he, like you said, like he was average, but like he did make some decent saves throughout, but the others did a really good job of, of limiting them. So for me, it's like, 
are the Oilers going to play that well in front of Skinner to help him out? Because what was Skinner's save percentage in that game? Probably 870 or something like that, I would assume. Maybe a little bit lower. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and, and then it's like, that's fine. What he did, there it is, 882. But he was good. Like, the two goals that went in, like, what are you going to do? You have a straight up one-on-one with Connor Golland, and the other one might have been tipped or just, like, was completely screened either one. And it goes in. So it's like, unfortunately, what happened to him in that game. But you can't have what Skinner was in those previous three games to start the series. That's for sure. You need him way better than that. But I have full confidence that he can do that. He's proven all season that he's a legit goalie that can carry the load in the NHL. And you've mentioned it before, too. This is the first time that he has been asked to play this many games. So I'm not worried about him. I think this little break, having picked it in there, is good. And I think moving on to a different series is going to be good for Skinner as well. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.